Today in this session of Ask General, I'm going to answer some selected queries uh, that you all have put forward to me. Well, I was a very conscientious cadet in the academy, but yes, I did get into trouble in the academy. Uh, I remember once in the NDA, uh, when I'd gone to town on a Sunday, I didn't have a liberty pass. I was not supposed to go that Sunday, but a friend of mine and me decided that let's take this opportunity. So we caught the bus and we went off. And uh, sure enough, when we landed back in NDA, the bus used to drop us at the gold market, which was uh, the stop and that's where a drill ustad was waiting and the moment we got off he asked us for our liberty cards and i didn't have one so uh, a report was made and i was uh, marched up to my directing staff the next morning and i was given seven days of uh, extra drills so that was my experience but there was only one because i was usually very very careful The gold medal uh, in the academy is given for passing out first in the order of merit. And to pass out first in the order of merit, a cadet needs to work both on his academics and on his outdoors, physical fitness, marching, uh, military subjects. Thereafter, he has to have good officer-like qualities. And those come from uh, your leadership qualities that you exhibit, the discipline that you show, uh, the conscientiousness in your work and that is an impression you create by uh, the way you work with your directing staff and that's uh, what their observation of you is and that's how officer like qualities are judged so it's actually a very holistic kind of or all round performance uh, where if a cadet works hard in all these spheres uh, he can uh, come first in merit and get the gold medal Once you pass out from the Indian Military Academy, really the sword and the gold uh, don't play any role in your career subsequently. Except for the fact that if you have passed out with the gold medal and the sword of honor, then the environment has a lot of expectation from you. You are number one on the course and they expect you to perform number one uh, in every activity or every task that has been given to you. So the expectations are high. That's one aspect. Secondly, when you pass out, uh, you are given a number, it's called an IC number and that IC number is based upon the merit that you have. If you are number one in the course, then your IC number will be the highest or uh, like I was number one, so my IC number is 39864 and any, uh, an, a cadet who passed out say 10 uh, slots after me was 10th in the order of merit, his number will be 10 more than mine, so 3984. Seven, four. And this IC number stands by you or is with you throughout your career. So wherever you are uh, going for a slot which has uh, limited uh, vacancies or if you're approved for a rank and there's only one vacancy and there are three of you out there, then the one whose IC number is the senior most, uh, he gets that vacancy and the others will have to wait in their turn for the next vacancy to come and sometimes it also ha happens that you might retire with no vacancy having come. But that's the role of the IC number and that's how your merit of sword of honor and gold play a role in your life after you pass out. My favorite weapon in the Indian Army was always the pistol. Uh, in the Armored Corps, we are all uh, given pistols to carry and uh, earlier we used to carry the Browning 9mm pistol and uh, thereafter we got the Beretta 9mm pistol and I really love the Beretta because uh, I'm a good shot. I had won the uh, best in shooting uh, medal in my passing out and uh, therefore it was uh, always fun to go onto the range and fire your Beretta. It was, it's my favorite weapon. My idol in the Indian Army, yes, uh, Field Marshal. Sam Manik Shaw and uh, it would have been a pleasure if I could have worked with him but of course uh, he retired much before I joined the army 
but I had the privilege of being his liaison officer when he visited the National Defense Academy in 1993. So that was the time I interacted with him as his liaison officer and I escorted him to all the functions that were there. And what a treat to work with that man. Uh, he's so meticulous. Uh, that time in the 90s, he was about 84, 85 years old, ramrod straight, uh, full of uh, good sense of humor. And he spoke of so many things which really, really inspired me. I wish I could have served with him. If I had not joined the Army, would I have joined the Air Force or the Navy? But, uh, well, I must tell you, I was actually an Air Force Opti. But my father did not let me join the Air Force because uh, there used to be a lot of plane crashes, uh, uh, fighter crashes in those days. And he told me that you are uh, the only son I have and if you join the Air Force, you'll get killed. So I had to change my choice from Air Force to join the Army. So that's why I joined the Army. But if I had not joined the Army, would I have joined the Air Force? Obviously not because my father wouldn't have allowed me. But maybe, yes, surely. My favorite workout is to go for a long uh, run, probably a 15 kilometer run, uh, get back, and then do a high intensity interval training workout for about 45 minutes to one hour. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, focus on uh, squats and lower body and on the abs. Uh, that would be really my dream workout. A funny incident uh, that I remember from the academy days uh, is when uh, I went to meet my wife. That time she was not my wife, of course. I was uh, just dating her and we were just seeing each other in the Indian Military Academy. She was taking part in the end of term play and I had gone to meet her. And uh, there was this big window, a French window, through which I would, you know, uh, communicate with her. Now, I was outside and this play practice was going on inside. And I was trying to draw her attention. But uh, I couldn't because there was, uh, you know, a lot of music and other stuff going on. So I knocked on the window and one of my course mates, uh, he came there. And I asked him to open the window because I wanted to speak to Supriya. But this guy was uh, very envious or you can say jealous of me because I used to speak with her. So he said, OK, and he just turned around and went away. And I was left outside, you know, waiting and uh, nobody opened the window for me. So that was uh, quite annoying that time. But now when I look back, I think it was very funny because uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't manage to uh, catch her attention over that noise and I couldn't meet her that day. I get a chance to serve again. Surely I would join the National Defense Academy. I would join the Indian Military Academy. I would do my best to do well in the course and I would serve the Indian Army all over again. Uh, it, it's a dream job and I really, really enjoyed myself these last 41 years that I spent between the NDA, IMA and the uh, Army. My favorite quote is Himmat e Marda, Madad de Khuda. That if you are brave and you have the uh, guts, then God will help you. I have a number of favorite sports. Uh, I really enjoy sports. I used to play a lot of hockey, squash, badminton, uh, swimming. Uh, but now, uh, because of the constraints of uh, availability of spaces, I play a lot of squash and badminton. So you can say right now my favorite sport is badminton. Mental strength is the key to everything you do and to develop mental strength is a full technique how you can develop mental strength but I will sum it up briefly to say that mental strength like you develop physical strength you can also work on mental strength and some of the things you can do to develop mental strength are uh, firstly uh, you must be willing to undertake that difficult situation that you are facing so the willingness is important secondly you must be optimistic you must always have a high morale. So to remain optimistic, you can use a technique called visualization. Where you visualize your success. So, or you visualize how you will be at the end of whatever you're enduring. Try and also link with whatever you're enduring with a bigger purpose in your life. 
So if you, for example, were to do a marathon and you link it to getting the satisfaction that you have always been wanting to complete a full marathon, then the whole process of training for the marathon and doing the marathon will become easier for you to endure. Another way to enhance your mental endurance is to seek discomfort. If you do things which are difficult, if you willingly seek discomfort like uh, when you go for a shower uh, in winter, don't turn on the hot water, turn on the cold shower and stand for one minute under the shower, then it helps to enhance your mental endurance. So there are a number of ways you can use uh, to enhance your mental endurance and I tried all of these and they are very effective. The proudest moment of my lifetime was uh, when I got commissioned. Uh, the day I passed out from the Indian Military Academy, uh, it was a dream of a lifetime that I had accomplished at that time. I told you from the time I was in class one, I wanted to join the army. So I had passed out from the Indian Military Academy and not only did I pass out, but I passed out first in the order of merit. I received the sword of honor. I received four more medals that was uh, for best in marching, best in physical fitness, best in shooting and first amongst those commissioned into the Armored Corps. I had commanded the parade. I had also met my future wife at uh, that time and she was there for my passing out. So that was the proudest moment I had uh, passing out from the Indian military. Academy. An Indian war hero who comes to my mind if they were to make a movie. Arun Khetripal, second lieutenant Arun Khetripal, Paramvir Chakra posthumous, an officer from my regiment, the youngest Paramvir Chakra in the Indian uh, history, and who fought so valiantly against the Pakistanis. Uh, wow, uh, he he's a uh, he, he uh, he's a dream Paramvir Chakra. So if they were to make a movie, it should be for uh, about Arun Khetripal. My perception of success is to have a happy life. A happy life which is uh, fully rounded. Not just one where you are struggling in the rat race to make money or to get promotions or just to do well in your career. I have seen a number of people when you ask them or you talk to them about somebody else, they say, he's doing very well. He's making so much of money. Well, making money is good, but making money to me, doesn't mean doing well. You have to make money. You have to be satisfied with the job you're doing. You have to be happy with your environment. You have to have a, a physical component which keeps you physically fit. You have to have a happy family who is also happy. Apart from you being happy and earning money, they should also be happy. You need to spend time with them. So it is a, a 360 degree uh, happiness which is actually what I feel success. So to me, a man who's good or uh, who is enjoying his life 360 degrees is successful. My message to the youth and to dis uh, defense aspirants is follow your dream. If you dream to join the Indian Army, then give it your best shot. And for that, you need to start working. The key to success is hard work, perseverance, commitment, focus. You have to be committed. So if you are hardworking, then anything and everything that you aspire will come your way. Thank you for watching this session of Ask General. If there are still any questions that you have and which have not been addressed, you are most welcome to message me on my social handles which are mentioned in the description. Have a great day.